good morning. Morning. One ban me, no coriander. Okay. No problem, hello. <laughs> How are you? <laughs> it's too early. <laughs> good morning from Ho Chi Minh City, Vietnam. Today is an extra special day because I've booked onto a tour to go to the Coochie Tunnels, which I did definitely Google the pronunciation of, so I think I got that right. My Indonesian brain was trying to pronounce it Chuchi, but it's not, it's Kuchi. I just checked out of my hotel. It's 8.30 in the morning and my tour bus should be picking me up somewhere between 8.30 and 8.50, so I thought, why not? Start the morning with a banh mi. It's definitely bigger than the one I had yesterday, but let's give it a try. Mmm, good Vietnamese breakfast of champions. So if you don't know, the Coochie Tunnels are the underground tunnel systems that were really, really tight that the Vietnamese, the North Vietnamese, used during the war back in the 1900s. They used it to outmaneuver the Southern Vietnamese and the Americans, set up a ton of booby traps. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Change for me, handsome. But yeah, these are the really, really, really tight tunnels that the North Vietnamese lived in for sometimes days on end. And I think it might trigger some claustrophobia that I didn't know I had. So we'll see how that goes. If you're new to this channel, my name is Ryan. I'm currently traveling across Vietnam on a huge adventure. So subscribe and come along with my journey. Let's go see if we can find my tour bus. So it looked like that was my guide and it's from the same company and everything. But then uh, apparently not. I'm back waiting at the hotel now. What a kerfuffle that was. <laughs> Oh well, as long as we get to the tunnels, that's all that matters. Ryan Banks. Ryan Banks, yeah, yeah. I came here, I did not see you. Oh, I saw another guy in an orange top and he took me that way and then he told me to come back here again. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you go with me. Yeah. My name is Jackie. I will be your two guy for the trip today. Gucci tunnels, some places they keep original tunnels, some places they already dug tunnels, bigger for tourists going down. And in the Gucci tunnels, they got the relaxing time for shooting gun. If you love that, you can try. And uh, you shoot to the target, but I want to confirm to you, I'm not target. <laughs> okay. Are you ready with the trip today? Yes. So we made it halfway to the Chuchi Tunnels. We made a pretty unnecessary stop, a bit of a tourist trap. I mean, I'm okay with it. The handcraft stuff does look pretty good, but to be honest, it's a little bit of a waste of time. I'm gonna grab a drink. I think we're here for 30 minutes and then we get back on the uh, van. Was a good opportunity to grab myself an overpriced mango smoothie though. 50,000, really good. So if you're wondering, I booked the tour with getyourguide.com or something like that. And it's cost me 300,000 dong for a 20, up to 25 person group. I think we're only 20 people on the bus today. And it includes pickup and drop off from the hotel. Let's go get back on the bus and continue on to the Gucci tunnels and see if my claustrophobia can be triggered. Okay, so we made it to the Coochie Tunnels. That took about two hours. Looks busy, but not as busy as I thought it was gonna be. The tour guy's pretty good though, on the way he was telling us about all the history and the uh, origin of these tunnels, which was actually to hide from the French. They were built before the Vietnamese-American War, so that if the French colonials turned up here in Coochie, they could hide, but they were bomb shelters. It was only during the war that they then connected all of the tunnels to use as an offensive weapon and a way to get away from the bombs. And he was saying on average, the tunnels were 80 centimeters tall and 70 centimeters wide, which is nuts. I mean, like I'm 170 something centimeters tall. I'm gonna have to bend in half and I used to crawl on their arms and knees. Not for me. No getting drunk in the tunnels. But there goes my party plans for this weekend. <laughs> In 1948, Gucci people dug 17 kilometers underground tunnel. So the French left Vietnam, American soldiers came. Gucci people and the Viet Cong soldiers started to come to the red color right here and dug the tunnels. They dug 250 kilometers underground tunnel. 
in six villages. The scenery was destroyed by the U.S. napalm. U.S. Army came here, they dropped about 200,000 tons of napalm. U.S. Army burning the jungle, they're easy to see the Viet Cong. They're looking for the high out. They're easy to control and manage the battlefield. You look detail, you see the first level got three meters deep. The second level got six meters deep. The last level got eight to 12 meters deep. When the U.S. Army moved closer to their place, the Viet Cong soldiers ambushed down there and then shoot out. So during the wartime, they live underground for how long? 12 years. They have to keep a secret. Daytime, they hide themselves. Nighttime, they come out. Like daytime, their activities underground. Eat, drinks, and even pee pee down there too. They designed a small restroom in the last level. After pee pee, they use the dirt. They cook early morning from 5 a.m. to 6 a.m. Because a lot of foggy on top. So when they cook, the smoke come up, little, little foggy move down, mix up together. And every morning, American aircrafts, helicopters flew up on top, look down. They check it out, they cannot see anything. So we just got a history lesson in the tunnels. And it's crazy because they built the tunnels with like a hoe, but they used the bomb fragments from old uh, American bombs that exploded on the ground and attached them to bamboo sticks. And that's how they dug the tunnels. And they had three different levels, which I think we're gonna go explore now. The top level was for like living, meeting, storage, and then the next level, oh, and fighting. And then the next level they would go down to if there was bombs. And then the final level would be like a bomb shelter with booby traps and they could close it. They were very smart. Viet Cong soldiers, they don't have enough weapons. They cannot face-to-face -face fighting with American soldiers. They are very smart. They're always hiding underground or they're hiding, uh, hiding in the secret places. They set up more than 1,000 booby traps. U.S. Army step on this trap and make sure to you, they cannot return. <laughs> you see down near has a lot of bamboo spikes. Wouldn't want to fall in that, would you? They were saying, he was saying that Americans were falling, but they would cover it with poison. And he was like, which poison do you think they'd use? He was like, rat poison, no, frog poison, snake venom, no, no. Human and animal feces to cause infection. Beautiful. The door of the tunnel. You're looking down, see. But they don't that want looks to. tight. Ah, is in that picture. For example, take a picture like this. Okay, so do I go under? Do I put this over me? <laughs> yeah, you just take it and get down like this. Oh, Jesus, it's very... No choice. Is there anything by you? No. Oh my god. Oh, I need to hear me. It's so awkward. Where's she going? Yeah, really. Yeah, we're really just I can't even get off. Like, oh my god. Closer photo. Oh, yeah. No, no, no. <laughs> Whoa, <laughs> it's tight. Here you go, man. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> Hello, sunshine. <laughs> oh, my. Oh, wow. Okay. That's hot in there. <laughs> I'm really tight. <laughs> they must have like gone rifle first. Yeah, just poked it out yeah. and kind of sprayed it around. We call fighting spot. It's very important. Viet Cong soldiers came down like this. You see. Yeah. Ambush and then shot American soldiers. Yeah. Cover on top by trees and leaves. And the Viet Cong soldiers, daytime, they wear the green uniform. To camouflage. Okay, we keep going this way. Honestly, the old coochie people here are absolutely crazy, saying that because they lived there for uh, over 10 years, 12 years during the war, they were crawling on average about a kilometer every single day with their gun on their back, but they weren't seeing any light. They weren't really standing up, so they all had like back problems afterwards. And not only that, in the wet season, a lot of venomous animals would go down, like snakes and scorpions. And the biggest killer, actually, especially uh, after war wounds, was malaria because of mosquitoes. So hard to fight mosquitoes. Green uniforms for camouflage during the day with the leaves and black uniforms for working at night. 
And the way they would get rid of the dirt yeah. that they're digging up is they'd fill up like bomb craters, they would put it into rice fields, and they would make fake termite mounds like this one. But not only would that get rid of the dirt that they're digging out, they also built in like multiple air holes to these termite mounds that they used to obviously supply oxygen underground. And the Americans apparently used uh, German shepherds to try and sniff out the air holes, but the Vietnamese would collect like um, American uniforms, shampoo, soap, and then also use chili uh, and like spices to put around the air holes so that the dog would smell them. They'll either smell chili or they'll smell like friendly Americans and then it would leave them. Thousand, thousand traps like this. But you can see many spies right here made by bomb cells and bomb fragments. I want to confirm to you, mostly the traps right here. You are some step on, they were wounded and they were infected. The first one is a sticking trap. You ask me step on this trap. Four spots of this trap hit very strong to their legs. This area, like the spy, stop right here, get out here. Clipping armpit trap, you ask me step on this trap. Two sides of the trap hit very strong to the armpit, the spy. Start over here, get out right here. Make them get stuck like this. When the U.S. Army step on this trap, their body slide down in the middle. Two sides of the trap rolling. They hit to the stomach. They hit to the back. This area too. Window trap. Step on. Die quickly. Both sides of the trap slide down. Hit to their body. Very strong at the same time. This area hit to the stomach. This area hit to the back, and the U.S. Army, like that when they step on this one, they <coughs> the blood inside out. They die. The last one is the door trap. The local people set up the door traps inside local houses door and close the door. It was hung on the ceiling of the house, but the local people they hang the rock behind this one, make this one more heavy. And you ask me kick the door, get inside the house, the door traps swing down like this. But very quick. 60% of the Kuchi army was actually female. The gunshots in the background just really add to the atmosphere here. <laughs> and those traps were mean as fuck. I would not want to get caught in one of them. This place is the first level of tunnel system. And you see, that is the entrance. If they have problem, they go down to the entrance, escape. In the war time, no roof. It was flat. They collected unexploded bombs. They carry to this place. But they just do this at night time. So that's why they wear the black uniform. They carry the bomb to here, and then they cut the bomb. It's a dangerous job. So when they cut the bomb, you see one hand with the hand sword, one hand with the water. If they don't use the water, the bomb will explode. You see that? Cut it. <laughs> they cut very slowly. After cutting, they get a bomb powder. So we've reached the part where you can pay to shoot guns. It's two and a half dollars per bullet. You have to buy a minimum of 10 bullets. I'm not going to pay for this. I've shot guns before, but apparently you can split bullets as well, which is great. However, David, David is going to shoot, so I'm going to film him while he shoots. Are you going to go for the AK-47 or the M16? I think AK-47. The AK-47. More, more like a classic, classic gun. <laughs> Everyone knows what an AK-47 exactly. is. Yeah. If you're not shooting, you can just check out the shop and there's a cafe over there to get refreshments. I'm going to video these guys though. It might be interesting for you. I saw that one coming. <laughs> Yeah.
Do you feel powerful? Uh, that's crazy, man. <laughs> <laughs> like your, your ears even, it protects them, but man. Your shoulder also. <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy yeah. experience. Wow. This is what 30,000 Vietnamese dong gets you at this place. Just, just for FYI. So we ended up stopping there for drinks and food for about 20 minutes while people shot the guns, but we're now back off again. I think we have one more thing to do for sure, which is actually crawl through the tunnels. I don't know how that's going to be with my camera bag on, but I think that's it. And then we leave and head back to Ho Chi Minh afterwards. I actually need to be back to Ho Chi Minh at a certain time because later I'm getting a bus to Mui Ne. I'm actually leaving the city and going to the coast. And I've booked a, what they said was a five-star limousine bus, brand new or something. So I'm looking forward to seeing what sleeper bus that is. I've heard very good things about sleeper buses in Vietnam and I'm excited to experience them. Uh, this is a normal sandal. If you use them, you just wear them like this to walking to move forward. In the wartime, they make very different design. The Viet Cong soldiers, they left their foot ring on the muddy like that. So US and me follow that. So they designed their rubber sandal with the opposite or regional version. Did you see that? So when they use them, they turn around, they wear them like wow. this to move forward. But US and me confused the Viet Cong move backward. We can't listen the backward sandal. That's really smart, but I feel like that's something, unless you're like constantly swapping them around, I feel like that's a trick that you can only use once because once the other team, the, the other team, the other army realizes that you're just wearing your shoes backwards, they'll just follow the footprints backwards. But I don't know, maybe they kept swapping them around so they didn't know if they were going forwards or backwards. It's time to go into the tunnel. Apparently we can either go 20 meters, 40 meters, 60 meters, or all the way to 100 meters. So let's see how far we can go. Do you like spaces? No. <laughs> okay. Can you We're going in. I don't know. I don't know how light it is. I'm already hot. I don't know. <laughs> I already feel like sweaty. <laughs> and this is a big chamber. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> ah, my bag's falling off already. Why did you take your bag with you? Because he told me to. Because we can't. We're not coming back. Wild. This is so small. This is wild. Tunnel, my bag keeps coming off my shoulders. <laughs> so these tunnels are already made bigger for tourists. <laughs> they would not be able to stand up in here like I am right now. What's on there? Dead end. Oh man! Don't go the wrong way. You might end up in China. Yeah. How you doing? I'm doing quite fine. For now. <laughs> yes. Just for now. <laughs> Just for now. Which way are we going? Oh, that's a way out. That's a 20 meter mark. <laughs> Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, that's air conditioning. <laughs> yeah. That's what it was. Cooler than a Oh, my God. Let's take a break. This is a pain with my camera bag. Millie? Millie? I have to cool it. Yeah, move up if you move if you want to move up, man. Oh. You're not really back for this. Yeah, my bag is not gonna let me carry on doing that. Oh. I'll say that I've done it, but. Are you, like, are you coming out as well? Yeah, I'm gonna come out. Let's go. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's fine. I'm, I'm not good doing it on my own. <laughs> it was just my backpack. It's a lot, isn't yeah. it? <laughs> my backpack wasn't staying on like my front, and it kept oh. dropping to the floor, and yeah, I was like, "This is a pain." Well done, guys. Well done. Well done. Yeah. We did. That Intense. was like 40 meters, 60 meters? 40 meters, I think. 40 meters. Yeah. Imagine staying there Come for on. like 12 years. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> it's crazy. Wow. It's steep. <sighs> I'm sweaty, man. I'm so hot. Jesus. <sighs> How, many, <laughs> How many meters were it? was this? 40 me. 40, yeah. Imagine going 60 more. Uh. I think it's not too hot to, it's like the. The yeah, legs. It's like the legs go through. My oh, legs are not made for that. Yeah. Like I didn't feel claustrophobic. No. Like the space wasn't an issue. It was more the the leg exercise. Yeah. And the and the backpack. The <laughs> Although did you see that uh, air convent halfway through? Yeah. Like, <laughs> my hair. Yeah. <laughs> You're like a troll. Like, my hair is just done like that. <laughs> I bet they wish I had aircon back in the 1950s. Yeah. 60s and 70s. Yeah. That was the best part of the tunnel. Yeah. <laughs> the the aircon. Yeah. My camera bag kept falling off the front of me, and I was like, I can't uh, just like hold my camera bag and switch. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we could have continued. <laughs> 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 
Did you do it? Yeah, I went the whole hundred meters. How was it? Oh, it got tight in there. <laughs> <laughs> I almost went out the 60. I was like, all right, everyone else is going. I got to keep going. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it just keeps getting smaller. And... It's smaller and smaller, yeah. 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 That hurts a lot. Okay, so we just had to watch like a 20 minute movie. I didn't watch it all. It's like a old Northern Vietnam propaganda movie. It was kind of interesting, but. I'm very hot and very thirsty, so I'm going to go find a drink. But that is the end of the Coochie Tunnels tour. Sorry, it wasn't really the production that I wanted it to be because I was with a tour group, so I couldn't really, you know, move at my own pace and get the B-roll that I wanted and stuff. But very interesting. I hope you get a full look into how it was. But don't click off yet because I'm actually about to go back to Ho Chi Minh City and then I'm going to get a sleeper bus from Ho Chi Minh City to Mui Ne, the next destination on my trip. And I want to give you a very quick tour of what this sleeper bus looks like because it's supposed to be a five-star limousine sleeper bus. So it's going to be super interesting to see what that is. I'll see you back in the city. This is me. So it's completely empty in here at the moment, but I can give you a tour because of that. So I walked to the bus station, picked up a bum me and some water, checked in, and then this bus turned up, blue one with five star limousine written on the side. The driver's really nice. Brought me on and showed me where I am. And this is my bunk. It's pretty skinny, so I don't think I'm gonna be getting much sleep, but you know, I should get there at nine o'clock, so I don't necessarily need to sleep. I'm not really sure where I'm gonna put my, my big camera bag yet. I have to figure that one out, but it seems nice. It's luxury. I have a TV screen over here and LCD. Didn't do anything like that. And a place to charge my phone. Well, I don't because I have a USB-C charger, so I can't use that. You're not allowed to wear your shoes on the bus. So they go in a little baggie like this. It goes in this little bit down here. It looks like they're double-decker beds all the way along it's quite a long bus and each one comes with a blanket but yeah this is the bus oh we're already on a roll only three people gone <laughs> and i'm one of them aircon's good privacy curtain it's yeah, good well. i like it and this only cost me 12 dollars for like a five hour journey so i'm very happy with that one five hours here we go Let's just pretend that I didn't come in and set the camera up first, but I have made it to Moyenne. I am staying at Moyenne Backpackers. I paid $12 for like a standard double room, but they actually upgraded me to a, uh, a villa, which doesn't happen to me very often. I always appreciate an upgrade, but it doesn't happen very often, so this is nice. But the bus journey wasn't too bad, actually. It took just over five hours with like a 30 minute stop in the middle where we stopped at like a, a rest stop on the highway. I got some pancakes, they were good. The seat hurt my back a bit where you can't really like properly lay down and you can't really like properly sit up, but you know, it is what it is. I'm so excited to be in a new area of Vietnam. It's great being in the city, but it's always nice to get to the coast or go out to the countryside. And I've rented a bike from here as well. So first thing tomorrow morning at sunrise, which is only about seven hours away, we're gonna be exploring Moi Nè. If you like this video, please subscribe. I'm trying to hit 2000 subscribers by the end of the year. I would really, really appreciate it. It would mean a lot to me. And I'll see you in the morning at sunrise in the desert. Huh, right, what, desert, Vietnam? See you tomorrow.